recording this session. So if you sign on late, uh, you will be able to hear the entire session on our YouTube channel. So to start off the session, my name is Susie Love and I'm the learning resource for Avanti Women. And as I mentioned, you are signed on for Avanti Women's webinar in our month of mentoring. What can a, web, what can a mentor do for you? The difference between uh, mentoring and coaching. And I'm delighted to introduce uh, uh, Dina Baratza, who is the founder of Avanti Women, and many people may be familiar with Dina um, as they are members of Avanti Women, but they may not know some of her uh, additional background. She's been in human resources for 25 years. She's a learning subject matter expert and a professor, the founder of Avanti Women, as I mentioned, but she also has a very busy uh, talent consortium business where she is the chief learning officer. Um, she doesn't stop there. She also volunteers um, at several places and is on the board of directors for the persons, the Coalition of the Persons for Disabilities. Um, she's got a CMP, Bachelor of Com Commerce, and is DISC certified. Uh, she'd be able to tell you a little bit more about her certifications, but I am going to turn the uh, floor over to Dina and um, she will let me know when I'm going to need to move to the next slide. So Dina, over to you with this first slide. All right, thank you, Susie, and welcome everybody. I am delighted to uh, share with you a little bit about my passion, which is mentoring, and uh, really do hope that you're able to participate today um, by using the um, bar to your right, where you can type any type of questions, and Susie will continue to moderate our call. So thanks, Susie, for your contributions. Well, let's start with Avanti Women, and uh, we are an organization that's run by volunteers, and we really want to empower women to move forward both professionally and personally in their development. And uh, how we do that is through our networking events, our mentoring programs, and our learning opportunities. So uh, I'm delighted to share with you today's actual um, workshop on mentorship, and it fits uh, very much in line with uh, who we are as an organization. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think our vision is really to bring women resources, and I feel that's really about who we are because as we as we mature and as we go through experiences, we have lots of nuggets of information and strengths that we want to share with other women. So this has become a, a real training ground for women leaders, and of course, we all want to bring forward our resources that have helped us along the path of uh, definitely around our own development. So. That is the premise of how we founded seven years ago. So thank you for letting me share that with you. And if we could go to the next slide, Susie, I would love to uh, cover, I feel that we've covered this a little bit about what we do. So the next slide, please. Sorry, I've got it up on if the screen. Is there a little bit of a delay there? Can you see that now? Yeah. It's still, Perfect. Uh, it still says what makes us different. So um, if you can get to the next slide, that's fine. I know I've put a lot of graphics in the presentation, so I apologize. But if you're interested in volunteering with Avanti Women, we're always looking for uh, new women to come on board and participate in a lot of our programs. So with that, today, what we're going to cover is recognizing the difference between coaching and mentoring. Um, as an HR practitioner, I know even within my industry, it's still a very confusing topic. What I'd also like to do today is to identify your own personal and professional needs and determine what do you need, either a mentor or a coach or both. And of course, I want to leave you with some thoughts around selecting the right program based on your needs. So again, we're going to do some self-reflection to, to help you figure out what it is that you need. So next slide. I thought I would start off with a pop quiz. So let's have some fun if we can get to the next slide. I'm gonna ask some questions and I want you to think to yourself, is this true or false? So number one, can your boss be your mentor? I'm gonna to wait to uh, see some of the chats, if we can use our chat box and say yes, no, maybe so, or whatever you believe your thoughts to be. Um, we have an, a response, yes, and the person has been lucky in that way. 
I think we've got a couple of yeses. So are you going to okay. tell us the answer? <laughs> um, I am going to tell you the answer absolutely. So, so no, your boss cannot be your mentor. And if I may put it in, in very simple terms, the premise around this is when you are at work, assuming you're in a corporate and not an entrepreneur, that your boss is really your performance coach. This person is ultimately like, ultimately accountable for your deliverables and this person will be doing coaching you know to delegate tasks coaching if you're bridging a gap around a skill and um, when we learn more about the difference between mentoring and coaching you might start to see the bigger picture that your boss your current boss cannot be your mentor not to say last bosses or um, other people in the organization could not be your mentors so we'll continue with that dialogue a couple of frowny faces there that we got the wrong um, answers. Well, I appreciate that, and that's great. And just this is about learning and uh, looking at, um, I think, mentoring maybe more from a mindfulness lens. And I think you'll appreciate as we continue the dialogue um, that you might have a different perspective. So I challenge that unhappy face to be a happy face by the end. So that right. would be my goal. So number two, true or false, coaching includes telling people what to do. What does the group think? Hmm. I think we have some gun shy people. I am going to say false. Let's see if anybody, oh, we have another couple falses. Is that? Yep. Well, technically, yeah. So that's very good and really coaching Coaching can include telling people what to do because it's a directive from the boss. You know, I hate to say it like that, but that's, <laughs> that's perhaps the picture that you get. And so there is a really great tool out there if you're interested, and I, I might be even open to doing uh, an actual workshop on this, the next workshop. It's called Situational Leadership. And for those that have to manage people or run a household or, you know, be a soccer coach, you know, uh, it's really important when you look at working with people, you have to understand, number one, what is their ability? And number two, what is their motivation? And when you use this coaching model called situational leadership, what that does is you, you kind of platform or plot where they're, you know, where you feel the people that you uh, are uh, motivating where they fall and so very quickly you can say they may be capable but they're not motivated so it would give you a guideline in terms of how to approach that person and in some situations um, when you're a new employee and uh, you may be new to the job absolutely I'm going to tell you what to do because I don't want them to be guessing so there is there is some mindfulness and truth around this so really interesting way um, to manage coaching so just share the answer with you and I'm going to move on to number three. So true or false, a mentor is a trusted advisor and offers guidance towards the future. Do you see that as a yes or a no? 100% yes. And I agree. Yes. So yes, you're all on the right path. And this is one of the distinctions between a coach and a mentor, and that is a trusted advisor. And, and the reason why mentorship actually works well is when you select the person you want to be your mentor versus here's the person that's available and that's it. So there really does have to be some type of an attraction or a skill set that you want to learn from that person, which is why they're going to be your mentor. And the next thing is you really do need to trust them. And not to say in coaching, you don't trust your boss. However, I would always encourage that it be very professional. So those conversations should be related to always business and remain professional. Um, and I just think of that opportunity doesn't exist today to become friends with, with the boss and actually would recommend staying away from that. Um, number four, so true or false, coaching is offered in several types of categories. Examples could be executive, career, and life. What does everybody think? Oh. Career coach, an executive coach, a life coach, sports coach. I can see people typing in their answers. And I think we have someone who's saying executive and career. Um, yeah. I'm going to say that it's true for all three. Okay. We've got another. So true. very good. Yes, very good. 
This is awesome. And absolutely, there are many different types of coaches out there. And executive coach, you're going to see that a lot in corporate career coaches, um, transformational coaches, wellness coaches, uh, mindfulness coaches. There are some really um, great opportunities out there that specialize in areas that you may be seeking. Uh, me personally, um, I invested in a life coach uh, when I was at my last corporate job uh, with Deloitte. And I realized that, you know, there was just something more and that I, I wasn't sure exactly what it looked like and invested in this life coach to really center me both at, you know, mind and body and soul and making sure that, you know, professionally and financially and also in my love life that, you know, what could I do different to have a different outcome? And it did change my life. And that was at age 37. And um, really what that did was open the door for me to, you know, leave corporate and give myself permission to run my own business, which I have been doing for now 10 years successfully on my own. And then that also led me to my husband, Richard, which I never thought I was ever going to get married. And there he was. And so, you know, uh, there was a big shift in my mind and things really opened the door and um, I left the coaching and then started to pursue mentors for the skill sets that I didn't have, like starting my own business or um, things that I needed to know running a, an HR practice. So I share that with you because this is where I was able to learn more about the distinction between coaching and, and mentoring. So recognize there are different ways of coaching out there and they are available to you and would be happy to recommend if you're seeking. So my final question to the group is true or false, both coaching and mentoring are focused on one's development. And we have uh, trues. Everybody's saying yes. Absolutely. And uh, congratulations, everyone. You passed. Um, <laughs> and definitely, uh, if we're not developing people from a mentoring perspective or from a coaching perspective, uh, then I, you know, you might have to reflect why you were in that type of role, offering those types of uh, gifts. I find these are these are gifts that we offer people. So um, <clears throat> that concludes this particular slide, and I like it because it gives me an idea of your pre-knowledge. And don't worry, there won't be a test at the end, but this was just more of an awareness for yourself. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, um, one one other note that someone has uh, someone has said that they worked at Deloitte for nine years, so it's a small I world. Saw that. I do see that. I see that, and uh, would encourage that person to reach out to me um, <clears throat> after this call. I'd love to connect, and my email address is dina d i n a at avantiwomen dot com. So feel free to reach out to me, and happy to set up a synergy chat. So as we continue with our presentation, I thought I'd start with a, found, a foundational maybe definition of coaching. And coaching is really the practice of supporting an individual or team through directing, instructing, and training. And it really is about enabling and not enforcing because we live in a culture where what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, and we have to try to fix everything. And I'm of the mindset, and, and a lot of my HR colleagues are of this mindset, where we're going to start to focus on our strengths and really build that capability to, to become that subject matter expert, that shmi, in that particular skill set, in, in anything we do. So um, coaching is really about unleashing potential, and again, is your performance coach. So I, I really think that sums it up. If every, anyone has anything to add, I really would be open to your perspective. Um, so use the chat to um, um, uh, feel to, to comment on what you feel is coaching. So um, I do welcome that. And maybe we can get to the next slide as that premises the next question. Thank you. And so um, there are lots of different benefits that are related to coaching. Um, you'll see a lot of organizations actually adopting a coaching mindset, training their people managers to become better coaches. Uh, and, and that's something that I do in my, my day practice, my HR practice, and it really is uh, successful when I look at some of um, the outcomes that, uh, and impact that we've been able to develop, that, that coaching mindset is going to be key in any type of work environment. And so what I like about this is it encourages also a lot of self-discovery, so emotional intelligence at a very 
starting level, level one they call it, is, um, is a awareness. So I think it's important that people know what is my current state, yet what is the future state. And that actually generates ideas, strategies uh, through collaboration. Everybody wants to be at work. And it comes with an accountability. And what I like about coaching is it's not just the responsibility of the boss. It's really about a dual ownership to be accountable for your own development. Um, hence, why this helps clarify what it is you're looking to achieve. So through that process of coaching, you have a clear plan that you can be both measured by, and I think um, that's the way to go in a business environment. So next slide, please. Um, again, there are lots of other um, benefits such as self-gratitude and also the concept of you know, giving back. So when it comes to mentoring, uh, a mentor in terms of a traditional mentor is really an expert or someone who is, has that experience or they have that qualification. So for example, uh, I'm the chief learning officer for my organization and often I have people who are in corporate learning who may want to leave and become their own entrepreneur, their own owner. And they'll call, you know, reach out to me. Could you mentor me? So, you know, that is an example of how I'm, you know, supporting other women to start their own business. So, mentoring is always going to be about um, the future. So, you know, even though today you're a manager and one day you want to become a VP, how are we going to get you there? And so, uh, it's not really about, you know, I want to get a divorce or I'm looking for that a special someone. It's traditionally a mentor that is around career and personal development. So I want to become a stronger leader or I aspire to become the president one day. And mentoring is more formal, even though in corporations and organizations, formal programs are more successful. And that is because it's really about the mentee. It's very centered around the mentee and really figuring out what it is that they desire to become. And then that mentor is that gap that fills um, the void around answering, you know, giving lots of questions and directions and homework to try new things to stretch your mind. So, um, and what I like about mentoring is you can have more than one. It doesn't have to be one mentor for a whole set of skill sets. It could be a mentor who's gonna help you put together a balance sheet and one who might be a lawyer and you'd like to know some uh, clauses that you should be using in your, let's say, um, contracts. So you may want to partner with different mentors for different reasons. And that's what I like about mentoring. It's like not a final sale. It's not set one person. You could have multiple. Benefits, of course, is a, a great opportunity to network with people in your industry and find out what's, what's happening from best practices and also building that relationship. Also, I find people who do mentor is they are very good educators and they do inspire people. And there is that personal satisfaction for them while they're growing and stretching themselves and helping others. Of course, mentoring is an aspect of leadership skills and uh, who doesn't want to give back to their community um, and of course, uh, leave a legacy. So I think that's why a lot of people like to do volunteer work. So that are some of the benefits for mentoring. And I share that with you because I think it gives a strong, um, to get into to this slide. And this is where the rubber hits the road. And in a nutshell, the biggest difference between mentoring and coaching is your coach is going to push you, right? They're gonna push you up that hill. They're gonna hold you to task around completing a deliverable. Where the mentor is going to pull you up that hill or that mountain and they're going to continue to ask you questions to how you could have done that better or perhaps consider different alternatives so in essence coaching is about pushing and mentoring is about pulling next slide please i'm open for those questions to come through and anticipation of some of those questions i've put together a little bit of a grid that might help break that down. So when you are a mentor, you're, uh, the focus is the individual. Uh, when it's the performance coach, we really want to you know, focus on the work that you're doing and how can you do it faster, stronger. 
And there's always an agenda when you're a coach because there's deliverables that they hold you accountable to with a mentor. There may not be an agenda and it's maybe more of a sounding board. The thing about mentorship is you get to select your mentor and with work, we don't get to select our boss. So you kind of, you know, it comes with the territory. And in terms of influence, a mentor has a perceived value. Again, one that you feel you approach them for the reason because of the skill sets or something that they have that you like. And so with the coach, again, it's the person with authority in their position. So that's why they're the boss. Um, some personal returns, especially for a mentor, is is the affirmation of leaving that legacy and, and giving back and also their own learning where coaching, it really is a byproduct of how they build their teams and how those teams are performing. Uh, so I hope this somewhat uh, highlights maybe the differences. And um, uh, again, uh, we can leave this slide up for a second, Susie. If there's any questions coming in, please do let me know. I think everybody is deep into lunch, Dina. Well, yes, absolutely. And it's a lot to take in. Uh, I mean, I do a lot of guest speaking on this topic and it is, um, it, it changes your mind. It turns things upside down. And, um, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with having a coach and a mentor at the same time. You can have a, a, a multiple mentors. Um, and just as you realize um, that, you know, you want to also differentiate what you want to do. Yeah, and I think, too, to the people, uh, we've got a couple of uh, smiley faces saying they're listening um, attently, but I also wanted to point out that uh, if people do take a while to process their questions, this will be uh, recorded on YouTube, and uh, Dina will, has also provided her contact information at the end, so I'm sure she'd be open to answering any of your questions through email if we don't get them in this session. Sure, yes, of course. Thanks, Susie. You're absolutely correct. Um, it's it's uh, something to digest and there'll be some afterthought questions, which I welcome. I, I would be delighted to continue the conversation around mentorship. It's uh, one of my passions and I feel that uh, where I am in my life, it's through mentorship that I, I am where I am today, which is why we want to offer this recipe of success to other women. So again, um, depending where you are in life, at your stage, um, you know, mentorship could also help you towards retirement. Mentorship could also help you towards I'm a new mother. And so, um, you know, I, I really do love that we have a mentoring program, even though our, ours are a little bit more focused on uh, starting your own business or advancing your career. Um, I still think there are other ways for you to get mentors out there. You don't have to just come to Avanti Women. I would always invite everyone to seek out mentors in their own industry, um, perhaps even uh, people who uh, have been ex uh, successful and received awards and have that resiliency characteristic that um, empowers and enables that success uh, for, su yeah, for success, really. And so with that, um, I always encourage people to even uh, look at 10,000 coffees uh, Yes, it's a free service and also leverage LinkedIn. So if you're looking to become stronger, let's say in innovation, look for some innovation experts on LinkedIn and then reach out to them. And I bet you for every 10 emails you send, someone will respond because they want to share with you their wisdom. So uh, that's as simple as the mentoring relationship can be. And it could be, hey, let's go for a coffee. And it could be just like a little power, power nap, really. So um, this slide really just helps reinforce those distinctions. Uh, so next slide, please, Susie. And this is where I think we get to be some, do some self-reflection and figure out uh, what is it that I need and what is it that I want, right? So we all know Maslow's hierarchy. We all need water. We need love. We need shelter. Um, highly recommend having a dog, maybe two or three. <laughs> and so, so you know, it, a need is something that we need. And we need a job in order to have a roof over our head and provide for food. And then the want is, well, do I need it right now? And we live in a society right now where everything is so instant, right? With When you look at social media and how we're addicted to our phones, do I really need to be on that phone? And for, for those that are in uh, 
born in the 60s, you know, we grew up with those hard telephones. And I'm sure you've seen those in movies and some of the generations and our members, they might say, what is that? But uh, I remember talking on the phone and getting the busy signal. So um, I think this will help you determine um, what it is that I need and what do I need right now versus what I want. So, um, and a really great example is I may want to become a CEO or start my own business, but what I need to do right now is still have a job to bring in money and then put a plan together. So I hope that is a good exercise that you can do on your own to help distinguish where you in your stage of your life and what it is that you might want to develop or need next. And I think that's, that's really important. Next slide. So it, timing is, coaching actually, there's, a, there's usually a cost associated with it. For those that have ever invested in any type of uh, coach, um, you know, there is usually a fee, a per hour fee for that. It would be great if your employer could pay for it. Um, so when, when coaching is needed because you want to improve your performance, you may want to look at an executive coach. Um, if you're interested in learning about your body, there's a lot of clinics like nutritional and wellness coaches that uh, will work together to put a good health plan for you. We also have coaches that are, you know, about succession management, about career transition. Um, sometimes if anyone has ever been let go from a company, um, they outsource you to an EAP provider, an employee assistance program, um, or uh, that type of organization that has coaches that will help you transition from the change of your current job and putting an updated resume together and some updated interview questions and skills for you to get out there and find that next job. There are life coaches, sports coaches, and lots of business coaches. So um, I always check to see people's accreditations. I think that's an important question and that will go back to your needs and your wants. Are you looking for a quick hit fix for a coach or are you looking for something that has a larger impact long term. So uh, anything that is certified through an organization like the International Coaching Federation, the ICF, you want to make sure that you know the credentials are there and they're listed as, as an, an actual coach that's certified. Um, and then mentoring, what we're seeing around some of our requests is that people want to either stretch their skills, like do more, uh, or uh, how do I influence better? Uh, how do I become a manager? And, um, you know, we've also had lots of mentoring inquiries around how do I find more of a balance, like finding a balance and still feeling blessed, you know? And um, the personal is also, we do have a high degree of women who want to start their own business, start multiple businesses. And we have some wonderful entrepreneurial mentors that help with uh, any of those types of skill sets. So again, um, our mentoring programs are around uh, focus on new skills, career progression, and uh, those transitions in life. So uh, this is when mentorship will come in handy for you. So again, if there's any questions, please come forward. If not, um, finding a member, a mentor, learn from somebody who wants to make you big. And I don't know if you can see the actual little mushroom. <laughs> um, you know, so again, going back to that push and that pull, that mentor wants to, to definitely be pulling you up the um up the hill so that next slide please so the role of the mentor again is um almost like a sounding board somewhere where you can actually ask those dumb questions it's it's someone that you want to obviously trust them and you trust them because they have been a good role model or you've been following them on linkedin and someone who's really going to be a guide and not just tell you what to do, but ask questions for you to think differently and also to support you with tough decisions. And I know in my career, you know, I always felt like, just give me the answer. And that doesn't always work like that. Part of the process of the appreciation of to where you're going in your journey of life is, is actually those little failures along the way. I like to call those lessons learned. So again, the role of that mentor wants to set you up for success and really prepares you for that future personal and professional development. Next slide. So for those who have ever had a mentor before, I'd be interested to, to learn from the group 
how many actually have had a mentor before. Uh, and then I would love to share with you some of the questions a mentor will ask you. So i wait for you to answer that first question. How many of you had a mentor before? I think there's a couple answers that are uh, no, and someone who who was had uh, thought their boss was a good mentor. So I think we have mostly on the according to the definitions that you've shared. Um, uh, no, they haven't. We, the, as the group, it doesn't look like we've had a lot of mentors. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's uh, it's okay. There's still time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and you know, mentors are going to ask questions like. How can I support your goals? And again, this is you who've gone through that self-reflection around what do I want and what do I need? And then, you know, being very transparent with saying, what, what is it that I can share with you? You know, like what are those skills that you really want to learn from me? You know, this morning, I'm going to give you a real example where um, I've completed a, a leadership program for a particular company and one of the participants had reached out to me because she was working on her development plan and she kind of wanted to improve the culture of work. And so she did a little survey. And so someone had stopped her to say, well, you know, are you the person that can make the change? Because I don't feel comfortable filling up this survey. And she was, she was really taken back by that and, and started to think, well, maybe I can't lead this project or maybe I'm going about this the wrong way and had a lot of doubt. And so, you know, she called me in a panic to say, you know, she was off her game. And, and I just said, you know, what can I, you know, what can I do for you? She goes, well, you're really good at, you know, taking something negative and positioning it positive. And I'm really looking to improve my influence skills. So, um, you know, we had shared with you the, the context of the conversation. And I said, well, why don't you just say to the individual something like, you know, we recognize that the culture has, has been morale's been low and people aren't participating in much and that you wanted to spearhead a change and that one love for him to participate to gather his feedback and um, to be a part of that change and to empower him to see the why he was going to participate and that if he felt so strongly about not participating because he was not happy that his this was his chance to participate and so she just couldn't believe that she couldn't think of that. And I said, this is why, you know, we're a good sounding board. And, you know, she wants to grow her strategic skills along with those influence skills. So it was, it, it was a five minute conversation. And, you know, I think I felt great that I was able to help her. And then, you know, she was so appreciative and was so engaged to try something new. So that is a really live example of how mentoring can be very helpful for those hiccups along the way. Other questions you're going to hear from a mentor is around um, the approach. You know, do you want me to be direct? Do you want me to give homework? And I think that's part of the agreement of, that makes it so informal around how will we be successful uh, so you can hold each other still accountable and also putting a time frame in place. And then again, um, being very clear with where the skills or um, that you're looking to build and how we're going to do it. So, you know, you're, you're not looking at uh, a one phone call over one night. This can happen over three to five uh, touch points and can be done both in person and on the phone. So, and we, we do see some trends where some people want to do everything virtual and we do have uh, quite a few members who prefer that face-to-face -face mentoring. Um, so just there's different ways to go about it. So these are the questions you can expect from a mentor. If you have any feedback, I'm, I'm open for you to use the chat and send them our way. Um, that will really help you, maybe encourage you to think about getting a mentor. Next slide, Susie. So coaching is unlocking a person's potential to maximize their growth. So you'll see a lot of, you know, performance management, performance development plans. They're always talking about uh, maximizing potential, um, unlock someone's uh, potential, maximize your growth. So, and that really is that enabling part of any type of leader. Coaching is a component of their skills and they are responsible to know everybody's strengths and know how to push those strengths so that they can be uh, the, the very best at what they do. So I, I really do like to use these different quotes. If we could go on to the next slide, Sue. 
And the role of the coach is really going to take the position of influence and setting the standards. So in essence, being a role model, however, um, it really is important that uh, coaches lead by example and that they also take uh, professional and personal accountability and always encourage you to try things. Uh, coaching is really important that they continuously communicate. Um, nothing worse than not getting feedback and thinking you're doing something right and only to find out a year later you've been doing it wrong. So that, that coach is really going to be there to help bridge the gap so where there's improvement required for a particular skill or knowledge gap. And of course, uh, when you're getting new work, they're going to um, definitely discuss the, uh, the bones of the project, the timelines, the expectations, the deliverables, and the resources. So um, I see coaching more on those task-related and performance-related, where that mentor is about the future state and really looking at um, pushing you to think and try new things to improve your, your skills. So questions from a coach. We'll talk about things like, you know, what's your current reality and what are your priorities right now? Uh, you know, what are the risks on this project? What are your concerns? What's working and what's not working? You know, um, they're very good at paraphrasing just to ensure that they're demonstrating active listening. So I think it's important that we all consider um, when we communicate different ways to make sure we understand where we're coming from. So a coach will definitely take a different approach. Thanks, Suze. We can do the next slide. And so when it comes to trends and mentoring, um, this is a really hot topic right now. And I'm seeing organization using mentoring programs as an attraction and retention tool, not only for staff, but for high potential. So part of uh, some talent, talent management strategies, um, we're working on mentoring programs that is very industry focused uh, and doing panels with other mentors for people to learn and observe new skills. And it's very powerful. It's um, definitely a program that can be built into a leadership program or be used as a standalone, like a onboarding program. Um, there is a certification in mentoring. It's that mentor certified practitioner, which the HRPA offers as a designation. Um, Doug Lawrence is the, the founder of that program, and I've actually reached out to him to be my mentor. And then because of our success through our mentoring, what happened was he hired me to co-facilitate the program with him. So if, if you want to become a certified mentor practitioner, I would be your instructor. So it's pretty cool how mentoring can actually work. So there are certifications out there. Recognize that trends are in now in workplaces are very group oriented and peer oriented. We hear things like speed mentoring and I caution you using speed mentoring because it is a registered trademark to uh, an organization and I just, their name escaped me. So I see a lot of organizations do speed mentoring. However, they need to know it's a, it's, owned by someone else so we have to be careful um, that we're not uh, crossing any copyright issues and what's really really hot right now is reverse mentoring so uh, and you know one to women has tested these at some of our big expos where we'll have someone who is for example very good with social media and knows how to navigate through LinkedIn Facebook or um, Pinterest will perhaps reverse mentor someone who just got their first phone and uh, would like to learn how to use some of those features on those social media platforms. So, you know, there's always a gift to be given. And you, you, as you know, there's a lot of women groups right now with, with mentoring programs and youth programs. So uh, mentoring is, is not going away. There's a desire for that to, to continue to contribute and and not only community programs, but also in corporate programs. And I'd like to ask the group, um, you know, has anyone else seen any other, so there's a visual there with the grandpa and, and the granddaughter where there's some happy reverse mentoring happening. 
Um, I'd be curious to hear from some of the individuals on the phone. You all work somewhere or you are um, uh, somehow uh, working and what trends are you seeing in your industry? I think we must have some um, shy people or, or maybe people who are um, still digesting the information. Not a lot of questions coming in. Again, we'll probably need, we'll probably see a flurry of questions, Dina, once everybody's had a chance yeah. to, uh, and I've, I'm sorry, I've moved maybe a little hastily to the next slide. No problem, no problem. Uh, we are coming to a close. And so um, what I'm seeing uh, from an HR perspective, especially in our uh, HR practice around coaching, a uh, huge component of leadership development programs, um, we're starting to see in, in corporations a lot of executives and life coaches, but we're not calling them life coaches, we're calling them wellness coaches. So helping build resiliency and becoming more mindful in the workplace uh, from a coaching perspective. So as you know, there is more money in addition to uh, um, research dollars going to neuroscience. And again, uh, I do caution you that you always look at someone's credentials when it comes to coaching. Do, do your due diligence to ask others for referrals, talk to people who've gone through the program. Um, everybody I meet in my social circle says they're a coach and then when I ask them, tell me more, what do they do? And I do the coaching on them. I am, um, I am horrified that these people are re representing themselves as coaches when they do not have the credentials uh, or the mindset for coaching. And so with that, um, I think there are two really credible sources, ICF and ICA. And again, I think you need to just ask people what their credentials are because sometimes what happens is you know, boundaries are crossed and, you know, we're not psychotherapists or therapists in any way and it really should be focused on career and um, that's why I really do push the governing body and, and knowing people's credentials uh, around that coaching scenario. So, yeah, I see a chat that just came through as well. So, it is very surprising and it's actually fraudulent in my professional opinion for someone to be calling themselves something that they're not. And again, you know, when you do those certifications, they have to do a lot of hours and there's panels that judge your answers and approaches. And it, it just, we live in such a complex world, we don't want to complicate it when you're investing so much money into, into a, some type of um, business coach or career coach. So th that really is my summary around um, what is the difference between coaching and mentoring, um, going through that wants and needs for help to help you determine what's better for me right now. Is it a coach or a mentor? And also the, you know, the definitions and some of the credentials and roles that we talk to around coaching and mentoring. And so I do leave that um, uh, open if you wish to reach out around further questions, clarifying questions. I welcome that. Um, as Tina, far as the presentation, we're wrapping up. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, but I wondered if, uh... Um, do any of the colleges have these kind of coaching certifications or is it through just the organizations that you men mentioned? So for from what I know, yeah, for what I know right now, there isn't a particular college or uh, university program dedicated just to a coaching certification. I know within some of those business programs or MBAs, they have a coaching component. So the short answer is no. And I would always go to the industry and, um, you know, professional association to find coaching and also go through your network. Know people, you know, talk to people that have experienced coaching and what's worked for them and the approach they use, how much money and, you know, and, and it's like an interview. You, you really want to find the best coach and also, and don't be afraid to interview a few of them. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, definitely, um, because they're so expensive that, um, you know, you want to make sure you're, you're putting it in the right investment. So good question, Susie. And I think I'll skip just to the next slide to give people a chance to write down your contact information, Dina. Uh, I suspect you will get some additional questions um, once people percolate all the information. So you can see uh, Dina's email at uh, dina at avantiwomen.com and she's also included her cell phone number there. Um, if you would like to reach out to her. 
and definitely um, you know for questions or as she mentioned earlier a synergy chat if you've worked uh, the person who worked at Deloitte um, you know Dina likes to keep in touch with people and um, always there's always opportunities to work together so I, I thank you very much every time I uh, facilitate one of these sessions I have uh, the pleasure of learning um, and you have um, raised some questions in my mind and I thank the participants and just a quick reminder that this will be posted on YouTube and you can watch again so thank you Dina and thank you for those who uh, uh, signed on and look for this on YouTube and watch for our uh, series on entrepreneurship next month we'll be posting some events so if you're interested in that I'm going to sign off now so thank you very much and goodbye everybody okay thank you Susie and everyone have a great day bye-bye Thank you. Bye -bye.